Building, packaging, and running containers is fun. But then it's not fun when you hit an exception and you're like, wouldn't it be cool if I could just debug this code from Visual Studio Code, attach it to a container so I can really see the line where the code is breaking? Well, guess what? With the Docker extension in Visual Studio Code, it's absolutely possible to do that. So in this video, we're going to work from start to end by creating an issue, building the container, identifying the exception, then running through the steps of how to configure Visual Studio Code to run in debug mode against a container, fix the issue, and then rerun it with the issue addressed. So stay tuned. In the next 10 minutes, we'll go from nothing to everything and then see how it all works together. So let's start off by checking the list of all the Git branches that we have for the current repo. Okay, let's uh, create a new branch and we can do that by checkout and minus B to check it out and create a new branch. Let's call it Docker Live Debug Docker. Now this branch is where we will run the rest of the video from. Um, let's open a Visual Studio Code. As you can see in the Visual Studio Code, I've got a My Web Project and then I've got a my web test project, and then I've got a Docker file. Look at the link popping up in YouTube that explains uh, so far how to create the my web project, the .NET Core vanilla, as well as the basic Docker file. Now you can see within this directory, I've got a Docker file and I can run cat uh, Docker file just to see the contents of it. Now let's start off by actually building uh, from this Docker file, and we can do that by running the Docker build, and by saying dot, we're saying from the current context, and then using the minus T to specify the tag that needs to be used with it. So let's just uh, do that, and then minus F specifying the file that needs to be used. So in this case, we're using the Docker file that I just showed you. Now, when we when we run this command, it just works through the Docker file to basically execute the steps that are listed there. Uh, and in this case, it's just basically fetching uh, one of the existing uh, MS uh, Docker images and then bolting on our app on top of it. Now, once the build is complete, uh, you can see a new image has been created and we call the image my web. Now we're simply gonna run the uh, image in a detached mode, attaching the process of port 80 to 8080 on my local machine. And let's just run it, giving it a name my web. And then we're saying, when you run my web, use the my web colon debug image, which we previously produced. Now, because it's running in detached mode, we'll have to open the browser. And as we open the browser, we can browse to port 8080 on localhost and we can see the container. Now I can click on home, it's good, but when I click on privacy or privacy, uh, as some of my audience would prefer it to be called, we see we run into an exception. Now, for one, I could uh, navigate to Docker logs, and within the Docker logs, I could look at my web uh, logs to figure out um, you know, the stack trace of the failure. But it's not the most intuitive way to work through issues. You know, this is still a very basic project, but what if you had a, a quite a complex big project to, to sort of troubleshoot? Now in this case, I could go into Visual Studio Code, I can try and look at the code and the exception in the logs and try and work out where the issue is. Um, again, in this case, it's it's fairly straightforward. You know, I embedded the issue, so I very well know. What you would have also seen on the screen is I'm using the debugger um, uh, command there to uh, sort of pause in debug mode, but it's not doing that, which is clearly telling me that the, uh, that my session is not running in debug mode. Now let's look at this Docker extension because this Docker extension, in addition to all of the other cool stuff it provides, also gives you a way of executing a lot of the Docker commands right from vision within Visual Studio Code. Now, as you can see on your screen, when I type Docker in the help menu, I should be able to see all of the commands and then start to choose from those commands what I wanna run. Let's just try that by typing Docker and you can see we, we get a view of all of these commands, which is, which is quite handy dandy. Now, in this case, the first thing we need to do after we've installed this extension is to add build artifacts for the .NET project that we have. And we can do that by using the .NET generate uh, builds and uh, 
debug uh, artifacts and you see it adds the launch.json and the task.json. Now task.json is the one that's of interest to us. Uh, let me just collapse the whole thing and you can see it adds a section for builds where it just basically uses an entry point of my web um, and then uh, th that's in essence the configuration that's needed to run the project in build mode. And you can see the moment I do that, now in the debug section, I have the option of selecting one of those tasks to run my project. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to run the Docker command for initialize for Docker debugging. And because this is an ASP.NET Core project, that's the type I wanna use. And my base image is running Linux, so I have selected that as well. Now let's close it and open it again. Um, and really what we would see once we do that is uh, there is now an addition of Docker build um, um, configuration type. Let me just correct the path because it's added in my web folder in front of my Docker file. And as, as I showed you, the my Docker file is at the root. So let's just quickly clean that out. Now, in essence, if I go into the debug mode now, I should see one more configuration in there, the third one, the docker.net core launch. So let's close this and clear this out. Just uh, we'll quickly show you that um, in if I run Docker PS, uh, I see that there are no currently running Docker containers. Just wanted to show you that that I don't have anything running uh, already. But if I select the debug profile for Docker now and run it, it's essentially going to go through my Docker file, rebuild the container from the image, um, create an image on the back of that, and then use one of the added tasks to take that image and run it, and then opens up a, a debug uh, view for me quite nicely. Let's just add a few debug points in here so that we can, when click, clicking on the web, uh, be able to have them relay back into Visual Studio Code. Now, as you can see, it's just directly hit the debugger and I'm able to browse my home controller code, which was always working fine, so nothing to see here. Let's click on privacy. We're gonna navigate the same code again uh, but as we work through this, we're going to come to the privacy function where um, we will see the exception happening. And this is me seeding this code of, uh, you know, a, a, a function that's not yet implemented. It's always going to throw an exception. Uh, as I said, right, simple if you know where it is and not very simple when uh, you have to work through the code and the logs to sort of figure that out. And you get a lot of nice help here, right? You get the capture of all the headers the routing, the full debug experience as you would expect it. So the, the fix here is fairly easy. Let me just comment this bit of code out. Well, actually, let me just comment out um, the whole uh, function which I created um, uh, so that we could just uh, fix the issue. Let's just uh, remove the message from the return view as well. And see, I'm not debugging or manually building here. I'm simply gonna go back to my profile and hit um, hit uh, F5 again, in essence, that's going to use the profile to run the entire container from build, uh, create the image, and then run the container image and come into the context of the debug. Um, let's just hit F5. And now if I go into privacy and work through skip. There you go, the issue is fixed, right? So hopefully you've seen how easy it is to use the out of box uh, extension uh, for Docker available in VS Code to apply and bring the configuration that's necessary to run a container uh, in debug mode and have the full debug experience as if you were developing the app natively. Now, this is one of the many videos I've created in Docker 
uh, be sure to check out the, the channel and the full playlist for Docker, where we start off by creating a full Docker file from nothing. So understanding what the from command is used for, uh, what's the benefit of using multi-staging within a Docker file, and then creating an Azure YAML pipeline, the Azure DevOps YAML pipelines, that's right, uh, to natively build a container, generate an image. Um, and through those videos, we also work through how to run unit tests within a container, uh, by layering on on top of the container image, a temporary image in order to run the test and then publish the test results from within Azure pipelines uh, so that you can visualize any failing test. Um, and stay tuned, this is in the last of the videos because uh, up next I'm gonna do a video that covers how to collaborate when uh, you're working in Visual Studio Code and especially when you're doing something complex like a container. Uh, and have that social collaborative uh, environment right available from Visual Studio Code uh, to, br to bring in uh, and simplify uh, team collaboration. So that's it for me for now, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you are enjoying the videos. And I would much love if you can tweet this, uh, this about this video as well. Am I being greedy? Of course, but then the content's free, right? So if you enjoy it, be sure to give back. Thank you.